How's it going everyone? It's me your boy Tabo and uh, this is another tutorial on 3JS. So I'm just honoring a request from um, a friend and supporter so this is for you man. Won't mention the name just out of respect. So um, what you see is what you're gonna get so I'm just gonna jump right into it. So here we go. So I've got a basic scene set up. Um, so this is what you need to basically start your 3JS scene. Um, so that is your WebGL render. I mean all this stuff, you know, if you're not familiar with the basics So I will link a beginner tutorial so that you can understand or know how to set this up But yeah, we've got our camera. We've got our scene. So here I'll be using Unreal Bloom Pass. This is already set up So if you don't know how to do that, I'll link another tutorial to show you how that works But these are the basics. So the main focus is gonna be on how to use shapes um, to create circles and to create points and dashes using line dash material and line basic material. So to get all of that started, I'm just gonna start copying some code over and then I will explain what the code does as I go. So one of the first things we're gonna do is uh, create an arc shape. Let me just enlarge this a bit. So over here I'm creating an arc shape. Um, this is basically the circle. Okay, so we're going to be using three dot shape and I'm just going to go to the documentation here just so that you understand how this works. Okay, so this is based off of this, which is a path. Um, but what we're using here is a shape. If I go back like over here. So this is basically the constructor for a shape. Okay, but this, the basic um, class is made from that of a path, so they share methods. So this does not have the, this method over here. So this can only f be found in the path class. So over here, then that's what we're doing. We're creating a circle. So this is ABS arc. So it takes here the absolute position uh, of our circle x and y so in our case it's going to be zero and then the radius the radius is one uh, the start angle is zero the end angle is what we have there which is math pi times two which is a full circle and whether or not we want it to be clockwise we set it to false so it's anti-clockwise but it doesn't really matter it's not that important however you choose to do it it still will produce the same result okay so over here we start with move to so uh, our circle was going to be in this position which is zero zero this is where it starts and then our absolute circle is going to be these values that i just gave now i'm going to create an array so in the line group this is where we're going to add the different shapes that we're going to be making so next up what we're going to do is i'm going to create a function called add line shape um, this is actually an idea that I got from the examples. Uh, if you go to the examples, um, they have a similar function to this. So I just took that and modified it in order to serve my purpose. So I just made some changes to it so that it behaves the way that I want it. So underneath here, this is where our add line shape will go. Okay, so this is our function. It takes a shape. So we will be passing it to this arc shape. It takes a color. So this is the color that we want our mesh to be uh, that we will ultimately assign to the material that we're going to be using for the for that particular mesh. This is the position. That's the X and Y position and Z. This is the value for the rotation, the X, Y and Z rotation. This is the scale. Dash equals to false, line equals to false, right? What this means is according to what I'm gonna pass here, um, it's gonna give me either one of these. So that's just what it's gonna do. So if I set dash to false and line to false, this is what I'm gonna get. It's gonna create only points, okay? So if both of them are true, then it will create all of them. Okay, and then just after that, I'm gonna create a for loop. And inside this for loop, um, this is where I'm gonna manage how I'm creating our shape. So just to explain how this is gonna work, we're passing in the shape, right? So we create a variable called points, 
And this is going to get the points from the shape that we're passing here, which is this arc shape over here. And then we're getting spaced points. Um, then we're going to pass space points 50. Basically, this value will determine just how smooth the circle will be. Okay. The lesser the value, then or the lesser the number of space points, the more jagged it will be. And then here we're going to create a variable called geometry points. And this variable is basically going to be the buffer geometry. And this is going to be set from the points. And then here we've got geometry space points. This is using space points. So these are the two values that you can use depending on the kind of look that you want to get. So I created both and I will illustrate what the difference is between the both of them. So then afterwards, then I will use the buffer geometry then to create the final shape. Okay, so here we're creating a line segment and we're using a line dashed material. Here we're creating a plain line using three dot line and this is using a line basic material. Okay, if you notice the differences between these, a line dash material has dash size, gap size and scale. Whereas here, uh, we've only got color and line width. Okay. If you go to the documentation, then you can see the differences between the, the material. And then here at the bottom, then we're using three dot points. Okay. And this is using the three dot points material. Size is basically the size of the points. So inside, then we're going to say line dot compute line distance. We're going to do the same thing for all of them. So we're going to set the position, set the rotation and set the scale. And these are going to be derived from what we pass on here from these values over here. After that, we're going to add that to the array. So this is the array that we created. So we're going to do this for each and every one of these. So these will be the different variations of the circle. Now, after that is done, um, this is a for loop, which we're going to use um, to add then the different shapes, right? This is the function. So now this is where we execute the function. So just to make things simple, I'll just start this way. Okay, so I'm going to uncomment this so that we only use this arc shape and this will create the points that we will see on our screen. Okay, so now that that is done, um, we're going to check what our scene looks like. Okay, as you can see here, we've got our dots. And so this is coming from this. As you can see here, I've set both of these false. So because they're false, then it will only give us dots. Okay, this is set over here. Okay, so that is just to make an example, but uh, now I'm gonna comment this out back again. Uh, then I will revert to this version. Okay, so we're gonna be using these now. Um, the reason why this is commented out is because when we're later then gonna add the different animations, okay, then this will actually begin to make sense, okay. So for now, we need to give it a size. So this is where this comes in. So I'm going to uncomment these. This is what I'm going to be doing here. I'm going to use this to increment the size. So it's going to be 0 0.3 plus I divided by 12. Okay. So if you look closely, you can see we have different variations of this. You've got your line here and then you've got but some of them are in the same place because what happens is because of how this is made, I is equal to six, right? Then the modulus for this is zero. So this will be true and this will be true. So meaning that for both, both of these will be created on the same spot. Okay. But for now that doesn't really matter because when the animation comes, then that's going to take care of that. Okay. So this is just in the beginning. This is what it does. This is just mainly meant to create a variation so that you have the different types of circles, you know, so that it's not just one thing. That was the main idea to create it. So this is what that does. But either way, it makes it look cool because you just have this cool variation that is happening. OK, so as you can see you've got some dashes, you've got some points and then you've got circle. OK, so now we're going to get to the animation. I'm going to delete this because this is no longer functional. So now what we're going to do in, in our render function, we are going to create a for loop. Now this for loop is going to go through our line group and it's going to then create 
different variations of the animation. I have quite a bit of animations that I was, you know, trying out. So this is what all of these represent. But what you see on screen is pretty much this setting. So I'm just going to comment out um, them one by one so that you can see what each one of them is doing. Okay. So that's what this what I'm going to do now. Okay, here's another one. Okay, so I'm going to comment that out. So basically, those are the main ones, I'd say. Um, this one is more like that, you know, that's what that does. So then what we're going to do is um, make a combination of all of those animations. So I'm just going to leave, I'll provide the code, of course. So you can take all of these different variations and then play around with them as you please. For instance, um, now this one has a rotation which is using Math Absolute, which creates this almost like it looks almost like gear-like movement using Math Absolute. That's what that does. But without it, then it just goes all the way. So I like the one with Math Absolute because it looks a lot more dynamic. Oh, another one that I can also show you is this one over here. Okay, so I'm going to do that. And then in combination with This one. Yes. So this is the one. And then if I add a scale to it, then this is what you get. Well, it's a lot just it's a lot bigger Then it's a lot more dynamic. So that's what you get with that. So yeah. Okay, so now I'm just gonna put this together the way that um, it looks in the video that I posted. So yeah, then you can just play around with it and do what you like with it. But ultimately, yeah, this is how you get this look and the bloom always makes it look awesome. So that's how you get that. So that will be that. Let's comment that out. Okay, so this is what we get for our final animation and this is what that looks like. And you can see now that all of these are nicely spaced out. This is what this is doing. Um, I'm managing the size of it using this. And so even when, when I comment this out, then it doesn't really matter because um, I'm already taking care of that over here with this code. So here we just need to make it zero again, like it was in the beginning. So we comment that out. Okay, so then over here, this is then where we take care of it. So this 
is the craziness that is managing the size of the circles and this animation. So the expansion and the contraction, this is what this is doing, okay. So yeah, uh, you're gonna get the code so you can play around with it, um, see what kind of cool stuff you keep. I mean, depending on the angles that you also play around with, you can get really crazy animations. You will see when you play around with it. I'm not gonna do all of that for you because that will make the video long. But otherwise, this is how I got this, um, looking the way that it is. So yeah, I hope you enjoy it. So yeah, love and peace. And please um, like, subscribe, comment, help me grow the channel. But more than anything, tell me what it is that you would like to see. And I will see if I can make it happen. Okay, so if, if, if you have any particular requests on the type of tutorials that you want to see, then let me know. Uh, say on the comments and then I will see what I can do about it. Okay, so until the next one, love and peace. I'm out.